Well, you mentioned the aftershocks first, David. Uh, only about 10 minutes ago we had another one. They said it was about 5.8 and there were suggestions that perhaps that area should be looking at possibly even another tsunami coming in after that. The relief operation right now is still very much a, a search and rescue operation, David. There's uh, obviously only been 36 hours since the initial uh, earthquake and the initial tsunami and rescue teams are still hopeful that there may be people out there. The problem of course is access and getting access to the areas uh, where the worst damage was done is still a problem and it's now obviously past midnight so I would assume that most of the people the rescue teams have given up for the night and will begin at first light tomorrow and of course now the big fear is that what they will find is going to be more uh, incidents like the one you mentioned a few moments ago. The estimation that in uh, Minami San Rico more than half of the entire town is unaccounted for. Who knows how many more of these kind of stories we'll be hearing uh, and how much more we'll be hearing about the nuclear problems that have been happening, David. A day of dramatic uh, escalations here in Japan and the story now appearing to develop on two rapidly uh, differing paths, both of them very, very frightening. Yeah, I just want to get the latest on the uh, reactor problem from you, Tamer. We're going to go into it in a little bit more detail in a moment, recap for our viewers exactly what's happened. But what is the latest we're hearing from the government about this reactor that, um, well, part of the building there exploded earlier? Well, the government has been very, very keen to play it down as much as they can. They said early in the day that they were releasing some of the pressure from that reactor, that they didn't expect it was going to be a problem, even though we knew and they admitted that the core was heating up and there was a problem in cooling it because of the damage that was done not only by the tsunami but by failures in some systems in the reactor. Then we saw that massive explosion, but the government told us after that that there had been no damage to the core itself. This was just the surrounding building and the core was intact. But what that actually has left us with is the realization that the uh, shell of the reactor is the only thing now that remains uh, that intact and that's the last line of defense against a serious problem what we still don't know is whether the cooling elements of that reactor are back in play and functioning well enough to prevent that core itself from going crazy the problem that we have is that there is evidence of radiation already even though the government says there hasn't been a breach and the government teams have been out and about in the area they say they have found three people tested for levels of radiation that they wouldn't expect they wouldn't say how high those levels were how bad the radiation poisoning was but they say they are now handing out iodine to anyone who's been in the area iodine is a, a counter agent to radiation and it's uh, uh, being given to anybody who's in the area and anyone who is in the area is now being evacuated at a radius of 20 kilometers. So although we've been hearing a great deal of reassurance from the government that it's under control and they don't see a problem and thus far we haven't really heard from anybody else that there is much of a problem, there are still these lingering concerns that the whole thing may not be entirely under control as yet. Seymour, well, thank you very much indeed. Let's look in some more detail at what's happening at this reactor. It's called the Fukushima Daiichi reactor. It's in the top 25 in, in terms of size in the world. Here's Sonia Gallego. Already unstable, but now teetering on what looks like a meltdown. After the quake and the tsunami, a blast at the Daiichi nuclear power plant in Fukushima. It's sheer power, plain to see reports that the roof of one of the reactors had caved in offered a worrying sign that the containment building may have been breached this picture was taken directly after the explosion it shows four reactors the one on the furthest left circled in yellow no longer has its outer structure several workers were reportedly injured in the blast Engineers at the plant about 240 kilometers north of the Japanese capital Tokyo have been furiously trying to cool the reactor to reduce pressure in its metallic core. In normal conditions, the core of the reactor is kept cool by pushing water or coolant through to the top of the reactor as it produces power. During an emergency, control rods are inserted into the core to stop electricity production. The core remains very hot, but the water or coolant keeps it under control. But the earthquake wasn't the end of it. The ensuing tsunami destroyed the electrical grid and diesel generators that would normally keep the water moving. Batteries are then the last resort to run the pumps, and they only have a lifespan of eight hours. Once the batteries fail, one option is to relieve the pressure inside the boiling reactor by a controlled release of steam. The ultimate task will be to prevent the further leakage of radioactive material. 
But as the evacuation radius in Fukushima keeps extending, there are fears that it may already be too late. Within 10 minutes of losing the calling, the fuel was doomed. And then it followed a cycle, which we know at Three Mile Island was occurring. Uh, Three Mile Island stopped because the, in, the containment dome didn't fail. This one, it seems as though the containment zones out. So now it moves on into another area, another level of magnitude, where the radioactivity is available for release. Some of it has been probably violently ejected into the atmosphere, and is now being carried by wind and weather somewhere else. So it's happening at the moment. And as the mammoth relief operation continues to victims all across the country, the race is on to prevent a nuclear meltdown in the middle of a horrifying natural disaster. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera. 45 countries are now helping in the relief operation in Japan. Let's go through a little bit of what...